Well, good morning. It's good to see those that are here this morning. We will uh, go ahead and get started with our call to worship. So if you'll please stand, we will sing His Name is Wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master. Hillcrest Baptist Church. It's good to see everybody this morning. I have a few announcements for you. I uh, want to cast your eyes up to the uh, wreath on the wall. Uh, 53 gold balls. We can honor that there was actually 53. I've never heard that before. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, God is good. Uh, regardless, 52, 53, if there's only 52, somebody put another grand in the uh, offering, then it'll be 53 and we'll be right. There you go. But God is good. Not only, you know, our goal was 17,000. He, he, he would have been showing out just doubling that, but he's tripled it. Uh, so let's give God a, a, just a little bit of praise this morning. Amen. Wednesday, we will uh, be resuming prayer meeting here at 6.30, and so we ask uh, uh, that you come back for a prayer meeting and a, a good time of singing and uh, prayer and, and a, a message from Brother Jerry, and so we ask that uh, if you're able to, to come back on Wednesday. Uh, also, there are offering envelopes out on the table out there. Uh, if your name uh, is on one of the boxes, go ahead and pick that one up. That's yours. And if your name is not on one of them and you want a box of envelopes, uh, we ask that you just write down your name on the, uh, on the piece of paper out there, and Miss Ginger will uh, order a box for, for you custom made. Uh, so check out there to see if your envelopes are out there. And I think that's all the announcements I have. I want to welcome everybody to Hillcrest. The way we're going to welcome each other is we're just going to stand up and we're going to wave from, from afar.
Continue on with the solid rock. stand as we continue on with all hail the power of Jesus name.
you may be seated. Good morning. Isn't it great to be here this morning? Just a beautiful day. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield it and still. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way, wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o my being, absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. We're going to open up in prayer. Look around. I like to look around so I can pray for you while I'm not praying out loud. Sometimes when I when I hesitate when I'm preaching, I'm actually thinking about somebody in here and trying to pray at the same time. So I would encourage you to look around and pick out a name and pray for that person as we pray. So let's go to the Lord and pray. Almighty Father. God, we love you. We praise you. We're here today to worship you. Lord, I pray that uh, all of us would feel the very presence of God right now. I pray, Lord, that you would reveal in our hearts the things that take our focus off of you. Father, if there's sin in our life, I pray that you would forgive us of that sin. Uh, pray, Father, for the needs that we have and, Lord, those that are homeless, that are sick, and I I pray for Vivian, and I pray for Michelle, and I pray, Father, for others that have come down with the coronavirus. I pray, Lord, for uh, Titus, a six-month-old baby with a 103-degree temperature, and I pray for two young ones, Lord, that have lost their mom. And and the list just goes on and on. Lord, I, I lift up those that are needing healing, asking, Lord, that you would touch them in a great and mighty way. Today, Father, right here in the sanctuary, there are some that need just a touch from the Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that they would feel it right now. God, just let them know how much you love them and care for them. 
We bow down, Lord, today before the creator of all things. You're the one true living God, and there is no other. We worship no other. Father, as we open up the word of God and as we continue to pray, I pray that everything that we think and the things that come out of our mouths and our thoughts would bring honor and glory to your name. Thank you, Lord, for being our God. Thank you for being our Savior. Lord, I pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to be in the first chapter, or first Timothy, chapter 4. First Timothy, chapter 4, and we're going to look at the first 11 verses. So it's first chapter, I mean, first Timothy, chapter 4. Before I start, let me tell you that um, I have quite a few thoughts to share with you, and these thoughts have come to me first, things that I have to deal with, and uh, they're just thoughts that make us look at the past year, our spiritual walk with the Lord the past year, and what do we need to do in the future, in the new year, 2021? And as we think about that, uh, we're going to look at the Word of God, and two-thirds of the way through, we're going to look at some characteristics of godliness. So all this message will have to do with looking at the past, not criticizing anybody, but looking at the future for improvement. So verses 1 through 11, 1 Timothy chapter chapter 4. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from the foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine, which you have care carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise toward godliness. For body godly or bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having the promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, for to this end we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially those who believe. These things command and teach. The title of this message is aim at nothing and you'll hit it every time. Aim at nothing and you'll hit it every single time. And at the beginning of the year, it's always a good time to reflect on the past. Uh, maybe there are things that need improving in your life. Maybe you've done some things pretty well. Whatever it is, it's just a good time to look back at the past year and uh, see where you're at spiritually and every, every uh, thing else having to do with your life. A new year is the season of new beginnings. Um, the new year can be seen as new or it can be seen as improving on things that we've already started. Some of the things that we have done have been good, but they're not godly. They're just good. Uh, some of the things we've done are good and godly. So we look at the past year, looking forward to the new year. And one of the things that we've done as a church that's good and godly is we've started the groundwork for the new building. So we look at the past, but we also look at the future. There's some things in the past, building, the groundbreaking and all that, the prayer that went into it, the saving of the money that went into it, that was all good. But there's other things to look at, to reflect on, that we've done then, but we need to do now in the future. Once we get it built, guess what? <laughs> we've got to use it for the glory of God. So uh, some things we do good, but 
but they can be better. Some things we do good, but they're just not of God, they're just of us. So let's evaluate, let's reevaluate our lives. It's just a really good time to reevaluate the things that give you direction in your life. Maybe some of the things you look at, uh, you need to set new goals in your life. You can look forward to this new year with hope, with anticipation, with excitement, or you can look at the new year with no hope, no excitement, with despair. That's going to be up to us. I know this, the last year has been hard, especially dealing with the coronavirus, the changing we've had to do at church. Uh, but we got a new year coming. And with God, it's going to be fantastic. We may continue to do like we're doing. We've done the best we can. But we're going to hope and be excited about the new coming year and all the things that God has for us. And I promise you that God has a slew of things that are going to be put right in front of us and we're either going to do them or we're going to do them. I'll just put it like that. I'm not giving you a choice. We're going to do what God asks us to do. So I hope that you look at the new year with excitement, with hope. Do not look at it with despair. Whatever happened back then happened. It's over. Now we're looking that way, the future. And it's going to be good one way or another. Don't we serve an awesome God? And God is the creator of this world. He's your creator. And he didn't call us to aim at nothing. He called us to aim at godliness, to aim at his purpose. So there is a warning I want to share with you, and it's not to lose your focus on God. I read a story about getting sidetracked. I don't know who it was I read, but he writes this. We sometimes miss the great opportunities of life because we get sidetracked. I once heard the tale of a talented and gifted bloodhound in England that started a hunt by chasing a full-grown male deer. During the chase, a fox crossed his path, so he began now to chase the fox. A rabbit crossed his hunting path, so he began to chase the rabbit. After chasing the rabbit for a while, a tiny field mouse crossed his path and he chased the mouse into the corner of the farmer's barn. The bloodhound had begun the hunt chasing a prized male deer for his master and wound up barking at a little field mouse. Well, I read that and my heart kind of sunk. How often have I started out chasing the deer and lost my focus, got sidetracked, and ended up with a mouse, just something little. I'm going to tell you a secret about your preacher. I get sidetracked. Easy. Especially when it comes to preaching God's Word. Sometimes I, I, I try to get to my pew sometimes so I don't get sidetracked. I don't mind getting sidetracked. Sometimes I lose my focus. So I'm looking at this. And I'm thinking, I've looked at 2020 of the preacher's life, and there's a lot of things I need to change. I need to improve on some things that were pretty good, I thought. They weren't bad. A lot of them were godly. That's okay, but I could be more godly. So don't hear me and think I'm criticizing anybody. I'm not complaining about anybody. I'm just going to set some thoughts out for you to think about 2020 or the past. Also think about the future and how we're going to do the future together. So we're going to start out in 1 Timothy chapter 4 in verses 1 and 2, but I want to read verses 1 through 5 again, or, and um, then I'll talk about the first two verses. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, which is today, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking in lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from the foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. 
For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. So when you think about all these, let me start with verse 1. And I wrote in my Bible, I'll share with you in just a second, I wrote something in my Bible that I think is really uh, spot on. The first thing we need to make sure is that we're not deceived with our daily walk. The Bible says that some of us will depart from our faith. I wrote in my Bible, this is why people quit coming to church, because they've left their faith. They've left their, their faith in Jesus. They forget about their faith. They get sidetracked. I'm not saying you lose your salvation. What I am saying is you lose your relationship with the Lord, and sometimes you don't even know it. If we don't keep our eyes on focused on God, then, then there's all sorts of things that come into contact with us that, that can get us sidetracked, and they're not bad. Some of them are. They're not evil. Some of them are. So people quit coming to church because they get sidetracked and fall away from their faith. So here's my prayer for Hillcrest Baptist Church. And I think it's one that needs to be prayed. We've been now, what, since March, dealing with this COVID stuff. Started out in the parking lot, then moved back in here, and we couldn't all meet in one service, so we went to two services. When we do two services, we don't have Sunday school. There's a lot of things that take place that will allow us to lose our focus on the Lord. We don't have the fellowship with Sunday school that we normally have. We don't have the discipling that we normally have. And then we're doing on Facebook now, which we've not done before. We're also streaming. We're doing our website, keeping it up and there's a lot of things that we're doing where people can stay at home to watch what's taking place now, which is good. I've asked a lot of them not to come. I don't want you to come if you're apt to get sick. I don't want you to come if you are sick. If you call me and say, I, I think I may have this, you know what the preacher's going to tell you, stay home. Do not come and infect everybody else. So don't get your feelings hurt when I tell you that. It's just for protection. The point is that we made it so easy to, to worship with Facebook and the stuff that we put on the website that many would rather stay home and watch than come here. Again, don't hear me wrong. I want you to stay home. That's okay to stay home if you're an older person or if you've got health issues. But once it gets safe to come back, don't stay at home to watch Facebook. Shake your head. I'm right. Don't get off of focus. Don't get sidetracked with Facebook and staying at home. That is not biblical teaching. The biblical teaching is we are not to forsake the assembly of our brothers and sisters. And you cannot do that at home. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, well, I've worshipped at home. I watched Charles Stanley. I love Charles Stanley. He and I are close. We're like that. I'm his best friend. He calls me for advice. <laughs> Never mind. I appreciate all the TV preachers, but that's not like getting here and worshiping with your brothers and sisters and encouraging each other. And if you got a prayer concern, you bring it before the church and we pray for you. We may not pray at that moment out loud, but I guarantee you when you voice it, we will pray for you. That's what we've got to stay focused on this. About almost half our people are having to stay home each Sunday. I heard during parking lot church, I sure wish we'd just continue parking lot church. I enjoyed not dressing up to come to church. I enjoyed wearing my pajamas to church. I enjoyed wearing shorts to church. You're laughing, but that's what was said during parking lot church. I looked and there were one dash full of donuts and coffee, and you know what I saw, because I was watching you guys. I got criticized, and that was okay. I never said nothing. But that's not what our worship's about. Amen. I could have been in the most serious point, and you'd have been reaching for a donut. 
I don't know why I'm saying all this. That's not in my notes here, but uh, let's not get sidetracked. Come back right here to worship God. Just, I can't quit yet. I still have to share something about parking lot church. There's three or four cars that I saw these smoke signals coming up. I don't have to explain to you what that was. Come back when it's time. Don't get sidetracked and don't lose your faith. So look back at 2020 and look forward to 2021. Where are you right now? Where were you back then? That is past, by the way. We're in a new year. So let's look forward with anticipation and excitement and get excited about what God is going to do right here. We may not come back regular for another year. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. We're going to be excited about what what God is going to do this year. Don't get in in an attitude of despair. There's too much junk going on, and we pray God protect us from all that junk, but that's past. If you're here... You're healthy enough to be here, so praise God that you're here. Don't neglect such great salvation as God has given you. Don't lose your faith. Don't don't forget about your faith. Well, let's keep on going and look at the second verse as well. Um, they're speaking lies and hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. They, they couldn't be convicted of their sins. What I'm asking you to do is not pay attention to deceiving spirits, false teaching. And there's a world of that going around. We believe what this says and nothing else. This is our this is it. This is our standard. If it's not this, then it's wrong. Please don't get deceived and think that you can stay at home to worship. Don't be deceived to think that it's okay to do ungodly things just because everybody else is. Be earnest in your walk with the Lord. Keep on going and look at verse 6. Now, Paul's talking to Timothy as a preacher to a preacher, but I'm talking as a preacher to the congregation. This is not only me teaching, but this could be you teaching as well. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. So just a couple, three or four thoughts about verse 6. Your daily nourishment comes from the Word of God. This is our daily. Now, did you hear that daily nourishment? If you're a breakfast eater, then you know you get up and eat breakfast before you start the day. Some of you are not breakfast eaters, but you've got to have lunch. You've got to eat sometime in the day to keep alive, to keep going. You've got to feed on the Word of God in a, in a, to be able to walk with Him, to be able to share with Him, to be able to live for Him. This is the nourishment. Your faith is built up on this right here. You know, the book of James tells us the trials, and they're coming, by the way, if they're not coming... Uh, You've probably gone through one just now. That makes our faith stronger. This increases our faith. So you daily nourish on this, and through this and through uh, trials, your faith will increase. So looking back at 2020, how was your faith? Do you want stronger faith? Do you want faith to get you through whatever's coming without having despair in your life? Nourish daily on this. Let it build your faith up. And so what if something comes that's just really crummy? My hope is in God. My hope is in Him. And His will is going to be done one way or another. Your daily life is mapped out by the Word of God. I don't know how you guys are in directions. but When I get in a car, I can get lost easy. And I'll tell you something else about me. I'm a man, and my wife is usually telling me I'm going the wrong way. Now, what do you think I'm going to react? How do you think I'm going to react to that? Amanda, you know how. I'm going to do the opposite of what she says do. (laughs) This is my roadmap. 
if I let it nourish me daily, then it's going to guide me through that day. It may guide me through tomorrow if I let it, but today, that's what I'm concerned about. This is my daily roadmap. It's my daily nourishment. It's also my roadmap for my life. But i got to go through day by day by day, hour by hour. Looking back at the past year, how was your daily quiet time? And I had several comments after the first service. I was really concerned about this message today. I did not want you to hear criticizing. I did not want you to hear a condescending attitude from me. I just wanted you to, to reevaluate your life. And one came up to me and she said she'd been praying all night for me to be able to speak something that would speak to her heart. So my question was, did I? She said, you knocked it in the, out of the ballpark. Well, I didn't. That's just the message God gave me. But she needed to hear something about quiet time because she wasn't having a quiet time evidently. So how is your daily quiet time? Was the road map followed in your life this past year? Now we're looking back and looking forward. If you didn't have a quiet time back in 2020, how about start one in 2021? If you didn't follow the road map back then, how about picking up the, the road map and following it this year? How's your daily prayer life? Daily prayer life. Sometimes it's minutely. Sometimes it's hourly. How is your prayer life today? Well, I'm, again, I'm looking back, and my prayer life maybe was just okay. Is just okay, okay with the Lord? No. So as we're going forward, and you know that your prayer life is just okay, now, prayer's a good thing, but couldn't it be a really good thing for the Lord where you intercede for people and you pray about things and you ask God to give you direction for your life, but not just for your life, for everybody's life that you walk with, that you see here today. How about the church? How about the preacher? How about the deacons? How about the Sunday school teachers? We, we just learned how to pray. I was talking to a man uh, a week ago, and he asked me, I think I told you guys this uh, last week, why did I get up so early? You know, I get up at 2 o'clock and I pray and I read my Bible. And it takes three hours sometimes. He said, I couldn't pray for three hours to save my life. Nobody can. You don't start out praying for three hours. You develop a prayer life. You develop how to. And then you allow God to, if God, Gina, if God just gave me your name, that means I got to pray for you, whether I got time or not. So I stop and I pray for her, but then I also write it down and you on my prayer list I want to have my quiet time. And it goes around and I look around at how many people is here. If there's 50 or 60 or 70 of us and all of you, God puts your name on my heart, what do you think I ought to do? I ought to pray, huh? If he puts it there. But that, So how do you pray for three hours? You develop it. You look back in the past. I didn't do so hot back then, Lord. Each year I get a little better. Each year a little more, a little more. And I got a long ways to go, but you got to determine in your heart to do it. Lord, show me how to pray. Remember the disciples teach us how to pray? Teach us, Lord. Teach me. So how was your prayer life last year? How was your quiet time with the Bible study last year? As we look past in 2020 and looking forward to 2021, realize that is the past. And that means it's past. It's over. You can't do nothing about it. It's already happened. But we can do all sorts of things in the future. If we see something really good back then, let's build on it in the new year. If we see something that was just okay, but it was still good, let's build on it for the new year. If it really wasn't very good at all, let's get rid of it and go forward in the new. Look at verse 7. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. There's two thoughts here. First of all, looking back, and it wasn't so good, there are things in our lives that we need to reject, we need to get rid of. 
There are some good things in our life that are not godly. And if those good things that are not godly make us get sidetracked from God and lose our focus on God, then I think we need to get rid of those good things so that we can focus on the godly things. Does that make sense? Some of you may have a hard time with that one. Well, you're wrong. Good is not necessarily godly. And we're in the business of being godly. So I want to talk to you about your godliness. And I want you to look at the past. Again, this is not criticizing. This is um, trying to be encouraging with godly advice. So if you had to rate yourself on a scale of godliness, zero being ungodly and ten being real godly, none of us are going to make ten. Probably none of us are going to make nine on that scale. Maybe eight to two. Is that fair enough? How's your godliness? And be honest about it. Look back in the past and, and look where you've been and look where you're going. And I have some verses I would want to give to you that are characteristics of godliness. Now, these are not my words. These are God's words. And these are words that, that God has put in our hearts when we get saved. So Galatians chapter 5, there's two verses that have to do with a godly life, godly characteristics. Uh, that's verses, uh, chapter 5, verses 20. 2 and 23, and I'm going to read them, and as I read them, I want you to put on the scale, well, I was this one, maybe a 1, I was this one, maybe an 8, you just, you determine for yourself, so verse 22 of Galatians chapter 5, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, how does your love fit on that scale of godliness? Are you overflowing with love if you are put you down for an eight if you're not loving like you ought to maybe go down below five somewhere if you don't have any love put you a big fat zero if you're saved you got to have some kind of love uh, the second thing in there is joy and then followed by that peace so looking back in your own life your family life your work life and all the, the stuff that you've walked in How's your joy and your peace? Zero to ten. Joy and peace. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where I put mine. I'd like to say ten, but I know better than that. But Rhonda and I enjoy peace. We've worked on peace. We want peace. We've allowed God to give us peace. So, how would you rate yourself with peace in your life, with joy in your life, especially looking forward to 2021 with all the junk that's happened in 2020? Are you able to leave that so that you can experience peace and joy in the future? Keep on going, verse 22. Uh, the next one is long-suffering. That's patience. How's your patience? If I were to ask our spouses... Just go with me because I'm going to have to think this through. You know how I talk and it just comes out sometimes wrong. But wife, if I would talk to the wife about the husband's patience, would her answer be the same as his answer? Did that come out right? Did y'all know what I just said? So it works the other way. If I were to talk to the man, make sure I get this right, and I asked him, how is your wife's patience? Would your answers be the same? Yeah, fine. We know what that is. Fine. But I'm asking you to review your life, you evaluate your own self, because this is one of the characteristics of a godly life, to be patient. Do your children see you being patient, dads and moms? Children, do your parents see that you're patient with them? When I was... 15 and 16, I was not very patient with my mother. In fact, we didn't talk to each other 
It was almost a hate-love relationship. We didn't have anything to do with each other. I wasn't very patient with her. She wasn't very patient with me. That's a spiritual fruit of the Spirit part. That's given to you when you're saved. But you have to develop it. You have to learn how to be patient. It's given to you, but it don't come easy. Uh, kindness. Again, I could ask the spouses, would I get the same answer as your husband? If I asked your wife about your kindness, would your answer be the same? Goodness and faithfulness. How is your faithfulness? Fair question. God already knows. How's your commitment to him? Verse 23 starts out with gentleness. How is your gentleness? Do you lose your temper? Do your kids, if they do something wrong, would they come to you knowing that you're going to put your arms around them? You may have to chastise them. You may have to punish them. But you do it in a gentle, loving way. And some are not very gentle when they raise their kids. I know I listen. I go to Walmart. Have you ever heard anybody, you go in the entrance door, and you know in the very far corner where the automotive section is, and you can hear them word for word yelling at their child? You can figure out what they said to their child. You can hear, shut up, all the way across from one corner to the other. Is that being gentle? No. No. I'm not saying don't correct them. That's what they have duct tape for. (laughs) Sorry, that just came out. Ah, I wish I hadn't said that. Next one is self-control. You just saw the preacher doesn't have very good self-control. I need to work on that. All I'm suggesting is what the scripture says. Look at the past as we go forward. Galatians 22 and 23 help you with verse 25 of Galatians 5. So look at that. Galatians 5, 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk also in the Spirit. So we go through all the the gentleness and the self-control and the patience and all that. That helps us to develop a walk in the Spirit. So again, we're putting our our graph on on our scale here. And all those things in 22, 23, and 25 help us to do what's found in chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. So let me read those. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in in a spirit of gentleness and consider yourself lest you also be tempted. So are we very good at restoring sinners? Those that have done some things that we don't agree with, although we probably did those in the past. I've seen people point fingers at somebody doing something wrong when they're doing the same thing right then. Are we very good at spiritually restoring people? Verse 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. How are we about bearing one another's burdens? This is godly stuff. This is helping us with that godly scale going from 0 to 10 we work towards that 10 mark. We bear each other's burdens. Verse 3, if anyone thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. How many people in church have you ever seen that think more highly of themselves than they ought to? We've all been guilty of that, haven't we? I'm going to quit there. I'll be talking to myself in a minute. Verse 4, Let each one examine his own work. Then he will have rejoicing to himself. So all these godly characteristics, how do you rate as we look to the future? One other set of verses, then we'll quit. Or maybe two others. We're looking at godly characteristics. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I'll read these real fast. Love suffers long. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. 
does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. How is your godliness according to Galatians and 1 Corinthians 13? We develop a godly lifestyle and then we ask God as he fills our heart with love, God, what do you want me to do with the love that you give me? As we develop a godly lifestyle, God fills us 1 Corinthians 13, God fills us with love. As soon as we get saved, you got his love. You got his characteristics. So as he gives you that, looking back at the past, looking at the future, what are you doing with this love? Ask God to show you what to do with that love. I want to close with 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Again, these are God's word his words having to deal with godliness and, and then doing things for God. He talks uh, in verse 7, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. I think we could all agree that the end is coming. But we ought to be in prayer, serious prayer. We ought to be watching. We ought to be praying for each other. Uh, lifting each other up in prayer. Uh, interceding for each other. Pray for one another. Verse 8, above all things, have fervent love for one another. How is your love for others? As we walk through those doors, can you say in your heart that you really love your brothers and sisters? I know that all of us love somebody, but do we love all our other brothers and sisters? Well, you don't understand, preacher. They just get on my nerves. I probably get on your nerves, but get over it and love me. That's just the way it is as a Christian. But that works two ways. I'm going to love you. Never mind, I'm going to quit on that one. Verse 8, be hospitable to one another. And then, without grumbling. How do you be hospitable? You break bread with each other. You fellowship with each other. Again, you love each other. You can't get to know each other sitting in a pew not talking to somebody. The only way you get to know each other is to fellowship with each other. To, to have... I'm a Baptist. You have food with each other. You eat with each other. Yeah. I can't think of a better time to get together with somebody than when you have big old juicy steaks and say, Preacher, are you hungry? Well, duh. Yes, I am. I always am. Verse, uh, where am I? Verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards. Whatever God has gifted you with, use it for the glory of God. So looking back at 2020, whatever God gave you, did you use it for his glory? And maybe you just did that much. So we're looking over there. How about doing it that much next year? Just increase, just improve. I'm not asking you to be perfect by any means. I'm not asking you to be the best. Just to be the best you can for the Lord. All right, I'm going to close. Let me share with you. Good gracious. Got nine things I got to cover real fast. They're going to be short. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. That's pretty simple. Work on your love for one another. Pretty simple. So be serious and watchful in your prayers. And then work on your love for others. Number three, be hospitable to one another. It's pretty simple. So you be serious and watchful in your prayers. You work on your love for one another. Then you be hospitable to one another. And then use the gift that God has given you for his glory. That's pretty simple. He's gifted you with something that nobody else can do, and you can do it, do it. Even if others can do it, if he's gifted you, go ahead and do it. And then speak and live the word of God. This is your roadmap. This is your nourishment. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. Work on your love for one another. Be hospitable to one another. 
Use the gift that God's given you for the glory of God the best you can, and then speak and live the Word of God. So I'm going to close now with just a few questions. Have you spent daily time in the Word and in prayer today, this week, this month? I hope that you're having a daily quiet time. Have you judged all the sinful thoughts in your own life and resisted the temptations that, that engage you in serious sin so look at your life and see if you've gotten rid of the sin the things that tempt you the things that you fall for get rid of them so have you spent daily quiet time in the word of God uh, in prayer and Bible study have you judged all those sinful thoughts and things that you fall in temptation to have you given adequate time to your family Spent time with your family. I'm not talking about, well, you could play games with them. You can do anything. Just spend time as a family. Sometimes it's good to put the devices down and have a conversation. Uh, what did you do in school today? How was your day? And really listen. Just, just spend time. Have you cleared up all the sins or the unforgiveness in your heart towards somebody else. Looking back at the past, if there's somebody back there that you haven't forgiven, well, forgive them as we go into the future. Have you been honest and faithful in your financial matters? In other words, have you tithed? Have you given offerings? That's either 52 balls or 53. I'm going to have to count them. I know how many did I put up there, Teresa? Do you remember? I'm pretty sure there's 52. I'm gonna to have to prove Heb wrong. If there's 53 up there, I'm gonna take one of them down. I can tell you that. <laughs> take a picture of it and show them. Say count them, and then I'll put it back up there. Have you been faithful in your giving? Have you been faithful in your witness to others? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be like that dog, start chasing a deer and end up with a mouse. I want to end up with a prized deer. I want to end up glorifying God. And that's what this message is about, looking at the past. What can we change so that we can get in the future and glorify God? So the invitation is this. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's the place to start. You've got to have Jesus in your heart. If you do not have the Lord in your heart, then I'm going to offer an invitation. I'm going to be standing right down here. Come on forward and say, Jerry, I don't have Jesus in my heart. And I'll tell you how to do that. Uh, Christian brothers and sisters, I've covered a lot of characteristics of godliness. And I know that not all of us are perfect by any means. We're not even close to perfect. So there are things in our lives that we need to get rid of, things that we can improve on, things that have been good the past year but can be better this coming year. Just improvement in the Lord. So you determine and ask God to show you things that need to be improved. Again, I'm not criticizing, I'm not being condescending to anybody. I'm just offering spiritual advice about the future. And we start now at this invitation, getting serious with God. Lord, I do want to improve my spiritual walk with you. I want to use this as the roadmap. This is my daily nourishment. If it's a daily nourishment, then common sense says that I read it every day for help. So let's stand, and if God speaks to you, respond to him. If you need to come down and pray with me, I'd love to pray with you. If you need to come down and pray at the altar, that's good too. Uh, just let's do some business with God and let him speak to our hearts. Again, I will be up front. If you need to come down, I need to pray with you. Come on down. <clears throat> God.
my cross and follow me. I heard my master say, I gave my life to ransom thee, surrender your all today. Wherever sought his will to know, and in that will I know abide, wherever he leads I'll go, wherever he leads I'll go. Almighty Father, we love you. We praise you. You're awesome. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. I pray your blessings now on each one as they leave. I pray, Lord, that for the rest of the day they'd feel the presence of God in their life. And Father, that we just have a, a good time in the Lord all day today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.